Oh, hello again. Still watching, are you? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm just sitting here contemplating where I went wrong in life. I got a theory that it uh, started sometime when this van came into the picture, but uh, you could argue that it uh, goes further back than that to the uh, first rusted piece of garbage that I ever bought. But uh, either way, we had a real uh, exciting video for you today. I know I'm not looking forward to it, so uh, let's show you what we've got uh, planned for for today's life ruining experience. Now what I'd like to do is start on this rocker panel, but I can't do that until I get this hole filled and this giant dent here and this dent here all fixed because you want to fix as much damage as you can before you start doing a bunch of welding because if you weld this on then you're just welding all that damage in and the other issue is once I get this welded on I won't have access to any of this really. I don't know if it shows up well on camera but there's a pretty decent crease all through here. So we gotta hammer that out. And then there's a slightly less creasy crease, but uh, still existent nonetheless. So we'll have to address that. And we gotta iron out this and then weld in a patch here. Rectangle and square patches in the middle of a, a flat panel is one of the hardest things you'll ever have to do. What happens is the center of it basically acts as a big heat sink and it'll just pull in like this whole side. So this is really gonna suck to do, but we have to get it done before the rocker panel goes on because I can still get up in here from the bottom and hammer it somewhat when I weld it in. I don't think we're ever gonna get it perfect, but we, we don't want it to be like a half inch low or, or whatever, because that would kind of suck. Because I'm not the guy that's doing the body work on this, so I'd like to make it uh, uh, as good as I can for the next guy so he, he doesn't have to put on a half inch of filler at least not on this spot so as much as I hate this hole uh, it will come in handy because I was blessed with long slender alien garbage scooping arms so I can just reach up in here and snake around and get on the inside here with the hammer and dolly and uh uh, pop out a lot of this dent here So uh, that's what we're going to be doing not uh, a lot of excitement today, but uh, It's got to get done. So okay, we've uh, gathered up our implements of destruction here We're gonna start out uh, with the Neanderthal and slowly move our way up to uh, caveman Oh I'll start out by Going on the inside, holding a board on the outside, and just using this rubber mallet to knock it out into the board. And what that'll do is hopefully get some of this pulled back without actually stretching any of the metal. And then from there, the plan is to go to our hammers and our dollies and our slappers and what have you. And uh, we'll just continue to get this thing uh, ironed out here the uh, best we can. So it's going to make for some uh, real uh, riveting video footage here. So I'm just going to put it up on time lapse and uh, you guys can uh, watch me struggle here. I'd like to pretend that I'm enjoying this, but uh, that would be impossible. So I'm just gonna keep uh, going after this, I guess. I did have to sand off all the paint here just so that I had a clean slate to work with. And uh, it's quite a bit of stretch here. So I'm just shrinking that down using uh, the Unispotter with the shrinking tip for no real good reason other than it's convenient um, and uh, 
this isn't really educational, it's just basically watching me struggle, so put you back on uh, time lapse here and uh, I'll just keep going at this, it's going to take me a while to get this uh, flattened out, and uh, yeah. Somebody's probably going to want an explanation of what's going on here. So traditionally, if you're heat shrinking, what you would use is an oxyacetylene torch, which is still your best way. And what you're going to do is you're going to heat, say this is your high spot, you find the highest point on the panel, that's going to be your most stretch. Heat that area up red hot, it's going to come up. And then what you do is you hold a dolly from the inside and take your hammer and then you hammer all around and what you're trying to do is actually while this metal is still red hot you're trying to bring it together and and shrink it and then at the end you can quench it with water or with compressed air um, but the majority of your shrink is actually the hammering while it's still red hot you're just trying to gather this metal together and force it back together and force it down so that is your traditional heat shrink. Now, if you just heat it up red hot with a torch and then hit it with compressed air or water, you might get a little bit of shrink, but mostly you're just gonna end up with a big mess. So the, the whole point of heat shrinking is you're actually hammering that metal back into, into itself. So what's happening here with this is, this is just a little copper, uh, Thing. I don't know what you'd call that and basically uh, it goes into a unispotter these are readily available and most body shops don't use them anymore so you can pick them up pretty cheap secondhand and what happens is you push this up against your high spot and then hit the trigger and this will heat the area up to as hot as you want to get it I guess and this is just for really tiny stretched areas or doing uh, blind shrinks and what i mean by blind shrinks is you don't have uh, somebody to help you out and uh, or you don't have good access to the back side of the panel to hold a dolly so you're just doing a whole a series of very small shrinks to work your way up to that big shrink which you would typically be able to do with an oxyacetylene torch so this is just a way of kind of sneaking up on shrinking metal without actually uh, you know going the full mile if you're like me and you don't have uh, people hanging around uh, giving you a hand shrinking stuff uh, this uh, works well so typically just that uh, little bit of uh, uh, compressed air on it is enough to shrink it down a bit obviously you have to do more applications with this but it is kind of a handy tool so uh, I'll just kind of show you a quick demonstration here so you can see I hammered a little uh, dimple into this metal here so that area is now stretched and I'm just going to take the uh, unispotter, stick it on there for a couple seconds, blow some compressed air on it and shrink it down and uh, with this bump like this there's probably still going to be some hammer and dolly work to get it all flat again or you may have to do a couple different applications but i'll just kind of run you through the motions here and you can kind of see hopefully uh what what i'm doing on the side of the van there and again the reason for for using this was i didn't really have a whole lot of access didn't have anyone to help me out and also sometimes it's just fun to get out the unispotter and uh, uh, use it so that's that's uh all the theory behind that So you can see that already dropped that high spot down quite a bit. And there's a little little nub on there just from uh, the tip kind of arcing out, which is just the way it is. But uh, we'll see if we can uh, just run the hammer over that really lightly and uh, see if we can get this thing totally flat again.
and just a little bit of hammering on there. We can see that's completely gone away. And we're back on the same plane again. Um, I'll just maybe just touch this lightly with the, the sander just to uh, knock this little ridge off of it. And then that should be totally, totally smooth again. Okay, you can see I just very lightly went over this, sanded it down, and uh, it's back to uh, being flat again. So that's that's how that works. Here's how it looks from the back. You can see a couple spots here where uh, it's important to keep the ground ring clean on this because sometimes it'll arc out and like leave a weird spot on your panel. Uh, so try to keep that as clean as you can, but uh, kind of a handy tool and uh, not as effective as uh, the old acetylene torch, but uh, it uh, does the trick and you can kind of, even on a big, big uh, spot, you can sneak up on it bit by bit with this. Um, so pretty, pretty handy if you're doing these uh, blind shrinks. Um, and just wanted to give you a demonstration there of what I've been doing on the side of the van there on that dent. So hopefully that helps you out. Okay, I got this uh, flattened out about as good as it's going to get for now. Obviously, they're still rust pitting and stuff, but uh, we can't do anything about that. We but. managed to get the uh, worst of the dent out, so that's good. And uh, uh, we can always come back and fiddle with it some more, but uh, that was uh, not fun. And uh, this won't be fun either, but the uh, thing is, is when we weld this in, it's going to want to cave in all this again. Anyways, so I don't want to waste too much time trying to get it absolutely perfect uh, so that's what we're going to work on now is getting this patched in here Okay, I got this patch panel uh, tacked in here with the MIG and now I'm going to go in with the TIG welder and I'm going to hammer weld it and what that means is I'm going to weld a little bit and then while the weld is still hot I'm going to hammer on dolly to stretch it back into shape. Uh, I'm not super concerned about like metal finishing this but I just want to keep it as straight as possible so that's why we're going to be hammer welding it and I know some of you are going to mention uh, rounding the corners. Uh, yes, that is a good idea problem is is somebody's already cut out a square here and I'm trying to keep this repair as small as possible and to be uh, perfectly honest I've done it both ways rounded corners and straight corners and in something like this it doesn't make a whole lot of difference it's gonna walk around on us anyways and so yes you should round the corners it makes things a little easier but on something like this it's not gonna matter, we're gonna have a mess on our hands either way. 
So I'm gonna uh, weld this in and try to avoid uh, too much damage, but it's definitely gonna be a bit of a challenge here. So I'll get started. So if I was trying to like metal finish this perfectly, make the welds seams disappear and everything, what I do is I, I weld it, let it cool, knock the weld down with the grinder, and then hammer and dolly it. Um, I think I showed that uh, on the uh, roof insert I welded on the Chevy coupe there. I uh, showed how to do that and make it all disappear. But uh, in this case, I'm gonna be crushing out the welds while they're still hot and planishing them out, which means that there's still gonna be a bit of a, a ghost and uh, a seam that's visible where I welded it. But uh, it is faster to do it this way and it still does a good job of keeping everything straight because obviously this is all getting filler anyway so I mean we really don't have to get too concerned with uh, making it absolutely flawless. This method works uh, really well if you're uh, gas welding. Um, but it also can be applied to tape welding as well. See how the weld seam's getting uh, crushed out nice and flat there, so we will hardly have to do any grinding at all. And again, this uh, this works awesome if you're gas welding because you can literally uh, crush the seam basically totally flat uh, because it takes so long for the uh, gas weld to, to cool. Uh, you can basically get on it when it's still red hot and literally fuse the two pieces of metal together. So. Uh, with a TIG weld it cools a lot faster, uh, but we can still get uh, pretty, pretty uh, reasonable results anyways.
Well, that actually went better than I was expecting, although my expectations were rather low, so it's not saying a whole lot, but uh, that uh, stayed pretty straight, actually. So you can see the benefits of this is that uh, you don't have to wait for the weld to cool down in between welding. You can uh, weld it, hammer it, and then go right back to welding while it's still warm. Uh, so certainly faster. Downside is your weld has to be pretty consistent. You can see a couple spots where I uh, goofed up when I was welding and uh, the weld got a little chunky. So when I go to grind it down, uh, that those areas are gonna kinda show up and uh, not be, and that seam won't totally disappear. But uh, I think for, uh, considering we didn't completely destroy this, uh, this quarter panel here, I uh, I think that's probably good enough. A little little low on these seams here, which is pretty common. Anytime you do a vertical seam through a panel, it's always going to shrink more than a horizontal seam. So again, another reason to avoid doing these square type patches in the middle of something. But obviously, in this case, we couldn't avoid it, so we made the best of it, and uh, that'll be just fine. You know, I give that a quick grind there and uh, it actually uh, turned out better than I was expecting. Uh, if you were a real sucker for punishment and had a ton of time to waste, I mean, you could actually keep working this and get this uh, like metal finished and totally make the welds disappear, uh, which isn't what we're going for on this. You know, it's a pretty, pretty risky panel to be getting to uh, carry away with. But you can see what I was talking about there. Anytime you have uh, inconsistent weld and you're doing the hammer welding it'll leave it uh, all indented there and uh, make it pretty hard to get totally smooth and perfect the potential so. for this to have gone horribly wrong was pretty high and you know that's all reasonably straight still uh, i was fully expecting it to just cave this whole side in and just oil can and just be an absolute disaster so for the amount of time we had in welding this in i'm uh, very happy with that it's about time something actually went right. I was actually expecting this dent to come out easier and this to be the challenge, but the dent ended up taking longer than this did. So it, uh, six of this and 10 of that, but because I'm not gonna be satisfied until I've ruined something, I'm gonna use the Unispotter, put a couple of studs on here because it is a little low on these vertical seams. So I just wanna get that a little bit better not going for total perfection here but i just want to while i can i do want to get a little better i uh i would hammer it out from the backside but now that everything's all kind of welded in it's uh pretty difficult to get the leverage there there's the floor welds in here so i do still have to put in a piece of floor here where they cut that out on the inside but i'm going to get this pulled out first and then get it as straight as i possibly uh care to and then we'll uh, come back and have a look at the finished product. Once that's done, then finally, finally I can trim this back and get the rocker panel welded on. So that's the plan anyway.
There's a look at the completed repair there. Certainly not perfect, but one could argue that it is a slight improvement over this jumble of disappointment that we uh, removed. So there you go. Not uh, too sure what the point of this video was, but uh, hopefully you picked up some useful tips there. And uh, as an added bonus, the rocker panel is now welded on this side. So even though we still have an uh, insane amount of work to do on this, uh, at least we know it's not going to fold in half on us anymore. So that's awesome. One of the uh, patrons of the show was asking about uh, some of the inner bracing and how I'm making it on this uh, van. Um, I've been kind of racing through a lot of it and so haven't documented uh, any of it, but there is this uh, piece here that braces the uh, rear quarter panel or whatever this is, this corner here, and it comes down here to here. And this is kind of part of the spring hanger bracket which also needs some repair but I thought this would be this little piece here would be a good piece to document so I'm going to show you just kind of a fast easy way of making this piece if you're doing a show car it uh, wouldn't pass uh, inspection but for uh, what we're doing it's it'll get the uh, basic look of it by the time this is all undercoated and whatever box lined it'll look uh, factory-ish so uh, we'll get started on this and show you how I do it this is the old outer corner piece here, and you can see there's still a little bit of a remnant of this attached to this. So I did some uh, forensic uh, reconstruction here, figured out where this piece needed to fit onto here, and then got it all kind of planned out. And now I can trace this shape out onto a piece of metal. Okay, so we got our pieces cut out. Now we are building a right and a left, obviously, because both sides are rusty. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this top edge and I'm going to fold that over to 90 degrees, like so. This outer, and then uh, once we get that done, we can start dealing with this outer edge. There's the edges folded on both pieces. Now I took this uh, piece of uh, steel. It's uh, just a piece of scrap that I cut off when I was uh, building the rocker panels. It's about uh, 7 eighths of an inch wide. Uh, which is a little shorter than what it's supposed to be, but uh, we can kind of fake it out and uh, do whatever we want because uh, that's just the way we are. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of metal and I'm just going to form it basically by hand to uh, this contour. Um, you don't really need to use any special tools because uh, this is so... It's only a, like a one inch strip, so it's pretty easy to bend by hand. We'll just bend it all by hand, get it, get the rough shape in, and then we'll start uh, attaching it uh, onto here. So hopefully you can see what I did here. Uh, I just took this uh, piece of metal here and I put this first reverse curve in it by hand. I like to just, it's easier to do the reverse curve first, I find when you're doing this. So I just bent that by hand. And then I tack welded it here here and right on the peak of this uh, curve and now that's locked in I can just go along and continue bending it and forming it to this piece uh, this has a bit of a sharp break here so I'll pro I might have to do a little so I might have to do a little hammer and dolly there same with right here and then the rest of this it'll just conform as we go and I'll just tack it every inch and then I'll go back and weld the whole thing So there's uh, the welding all done. I weld it on the inside, that way I don't have to do any grinding on the outside. And you know, if you wanted to, you could come back with the grinder and grind this all and make it look all nice. But if you're just doing this on the underside of a vehicle and it's just getting undercoated or box lined, 
by the time you box line that or undercoat it, all of this will disappear and it'll just look like a stamped piece. Uh, you can see this weld came out a little better because I tack welded it on the outside so I didn't have to go back over my tack welds. You can see here where it got a little chunky where I had to go over my tack welds, but again, not uh, getting concerned about that on this project. But if you did want a little more consistent weld, you could tack weld it from the outside and it would uh, turn out better for you. Now, another thing is if you were going to paint this, uh, you could clean, the, clean up any of the slag, knock down any high spots with the grinder, but you don't have to grind the whole thing down. And then you can just take a little bit of body filler with your finger and just wipe it in there, give it a quick sand, and then it'll be ready for paint. And by the time it's all painted, it would look like a, uh, a cast or uh, stamped piece. So there's uh, one last step here. Um, there's a little lip that folds on this edge here. You can see I kind of marked it out on this one already. So I'm going to have to fold that edge over and just put that lip in there. And uh, once we do that, then uh, these will all be done. Just got my friend Mr. All 16 out again. And I'm just going to go along this uh, edge here and just tip it over a little at a time. You don't want to tip over too much. Then I'll start to uh, twist the panel and twist things around. You just go a little at a time and just keep going back and forth across it until it's pulled it up to 90 degrees. There's the braces all done. Let's get the edge folded over there. I'm not going to weld these into the uh, van until I get the outer panel on. Uh, but uh, I wanted to get these out of the way. So there they are. Hope you found that useful. Just want to say thanks for watching and uh, sorry this one wasn't uh, too exciting. Uh, but we had to get this hole out of the way before we could proceed. Seems like my uh, last video on this did really well so I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed recently. I was actually pretty hesitant to put this uh, project out there um, because it's pretty back to basics and just, you know, just getting things done. So, uh, but people seem to uh, seem to be enjoying it. So uh, I know we didn't do a whole lot in this one, but hopefully you picked up some useful tips. In the uh, next video, we're going to be building these wheel arches. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Also been doing some pretty extensive reconstruction on the back of this. So that'll be in another episode as well. You got some bunch of stuff going on there and I found some more rust today big surprise there but uh, uh, we were kind of picking our way through this uh, I'm uh, quite a few episodes behind here so we're just trying to get caught up on editing and stuff we also got some uh, tips on how to MIG weld in uh, uh, these panels uh, without uh, making a big mess so uh, hopefully hopefully you find that useful I know not everyone has a TIG welder so we try to go switch back and forth and uh, you know equal opportunity and all that stuff so uh, uh, thanks again and thanks to everyone who subscribed recently I hope uh, you're not uh, totally devastated with your decision but